Hello, welcome to 15minuteguitar.com. I'm Ash. I'm Rich. And today we're going to have a little chat about just the three big guns of the guitar world, and that being the Les Paul, the Stratocaster, and the Telecaster. Uh, so the point of this video really is just to show you what they're like, what they, what they do, what they sound like, what they're great for, and what kind of one you might want to look for. Yeah. So if we start off, what we got here now is the, if you didn't know, this is the Les Paul. Yeah. Uh, this is a Gibson Les Paul. That is a Tokoy Les Paul, which we've done in a previous video. If yeah. you haven't seen that video, go and check that out on our channel. It's a really good video talking about uh, your Tokoy guitar. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just quickly, we'll talk about the, the tone words that make him sound like a Les Paul. The artists have probably made them famous. Yeah. Uh, and you know, why we like them. Really. Have a little why, bit of jam. Why we love them. So sure. yeah, a bit of jam. So starting off, uh, just about the construction. So Les Pauls are solid mahogany bodies, solid mahogany necks. Okay, they tend to have this thing on top called a maple cap, yep. um, which kind of mellows the sound out a little bit, but can add a little bit of brightness in. We said about this one being flamed maple. Yes, so yeah, yeah. So you get it. two different kind. Flame maple tends to attach a bit of a high premium, so you might find you're paying a little bit more money for for those kind of things. It's that tiger stripe thing in that you get this what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they have to pick the wood out for that, don't they? So yeah. it's it's it makes sense. Um, three aside headstocks. These can cause problems with um, a little bit of stickage on the G string. That's quite a common thing. Don't freak out if your guitar won't stay in tune. There are things you can do to. Uh, I think sometimes it's just a good out. setup as well. Sorts out sometimes. Like yeah. The way you string it, like the guy who did this for me, he strings it a little bit differently. Yeah. So you know, lots sort of locks. It's like having a lock in tuner, but without having the locks. Yeah. And just kind of. There's keeps ways of doing it, it and you've done Yeah, I do the top wrap top. down here as well. I used to use. I used to use this stuff called. Um, Big Ben's nut That's sauce, yeah. yeah, which is great, and that stops it from sticking. It's not in so nut. great when your your missus looks on your credit card statement. It says big nut sauce or whatever. <laughs> it's, it's not it's not great, is it? So, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a great. That's just like a nut lubricant that goes in the top. Yes, of the yeah, and it just it just keeps it from slip uh, from slipping. Um, humbuckers also. Uh, Les Pauls have humbuckers in them. If you don't know what humbuckers are, they're just basically like two coils together, and they they do all the same thing. They buck the hum, yeah. so they don't make any noise when That's you like the noise. turn them up. Um, and they've also got individual volumes on Les Pauls. Um, but they're great. Um, so some artists that would play them, um, I guess they kind of edge towards the rock area of things, don't they? Rock and blues, yeah. yeah so, so who do you reckon? So for me, it would be, I'd be thinking straight away, is Slash, Gary Moore, um, Les Paul, the man himself who obviously yeah. made the guitar, um, designed the guitar, uh, Joe Bonamassa. Mm -hmm. um, I should probably leave you some. Uh, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> Kos Paul Kossoff, yeah, um, from... Uh, free. Yeah. Um, the guys from Thin Lizzy also really liked Les Pauls. Yeah. You said Gary Moore, didn't you? Joe, Joe Perry. Joe Perry from Aerosmith. Yeah. Um, it's, they're kind of like the synonymous sound of classic rock. They're, the they're the list goes of, on, doesn't it? Yeah, they're sort of the ones. They've got this kind of low end to them, and it makes sense that they are that because when you know when with that solid body, if you you hit this with some distortion, oh, when it's on. And they just sustain for ages. So great, great guitars. Um, yeah, so um, have a look at a Les Paul, see what you can get out of them. Great for jazz as well, they sound lovely clean. So if you want this neck pickup, you can play with your fingers, you get like a great jazzy sound. They're actually invented to be jazz guitars because the hollow bodies had um, issues with feedback and yeah. solid bodies didn't. I also think they great for that little trick where you just turn the, uh, you turn the volume down on one of the pickups. And they do that. Do you know the... Uh the kill switch. A little, like Hendrixy thing. Classic. Like Voodoo Char thing. Mm. <laughs> cool. For that trick. So, let's do some playing anyway.
grab, grab yourself a, uh, you know, go and try a Les Paul. Try these three out. You know, talk, three we're talking about. Just go and try them out in the music shop. See what you like. You'll find one that you probably gravitate towards. And if you have to choose one, you know, it's it's a luxury to maybe have all of those guitars in your if in your guitar bag. If you, you know, if you can't afford that sort of thing, so it's not, um, you know, it's a luxury to be able to own all those guitars. So just go and try one, and you'll find one that you gravitate towards, mm-hmm. um, and and go with that guitar. Really, uh, should we try out the next one? Yeah, let's move on to the next one. Let's move on to the next. Gun number two. This is the uh, this is the Strat. So um, this one in particular is a Jeff Beck uh, Stratocaster. This is his signature model, and that one in particular is a very nice one. This is a '79, an original 1979 uh, Fender Strat. Something straight away I should say about this one before we talk about the um, the differences of the construction of it. Mm-hmm. Um, you get mixed woods a lot with uh, with. F style guitars like uh, Telecasters or Stratocasters. So, for example, the body of this uh, is this is, is Swamp Ash, yeah. yeah, and that is older, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. So, and then this, uh, the neck on both of these are maple, both with rosewood fingerboards, but you can also get maple. But yours are already looking down there because it's more chunky your neck. Yeah, this is like a soft wider. C. I don't know what that is. If you know what that is, but yeah, it's kind of yeah. But they're, they're, they vary in sizes, but um, yeah. Uh, so the construction of these then. Um, they have bolt-on necks, so if I turn this back around, you can see all that is is the neck's just gone straight onto that, and someone's uh, just screwed it straight into the body. Um, makes them cheaper, and um, and also gives them a certain sound, like a kind of a brighter a brighter sound uh, to it. Um, six in line headstock, so you're going to have less tuning issues with this. I was going to say as well, it's quite interesting to say that that's more of the like the old the older style. Yeah, like a really larger like sized. Like and this is more of the you know the standard strap. Headstock and yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of what we know, know, know and love nowadays, but there's a lot of you know people. Some people don't like that. Some people don't like this. So, but I, I particularly like the uh, the old style. They're cool. They're cool. They, they have a good uh, look to them. Yeah. Um, pickups. Yeah. So again, I'm guessing on that being an original, they're not going to be noiseless pickups. No. This has got noiseless pickups. They tend to be in straps, like a proper strap. Would say was probably single coils. Um, I have seen some hot rodded straps with like a um, bucker and a humbucker in the bridge. Yeah. A very common thing to do, but. A standard, you know, strat is going to be single coil um, pickup. So yeah, say. okay, and three of them. Um, yeah. You'll quite often see uh, five way switches with yeah. uh, with three way uh, with three way strats. So um, basically, you've got neck here. If you do two clicks, you're at the middle. Two more clicks, you're at the bridge. And so you'll notice these in between positions. These are just the two pickups um, together. Yeah, and. Um, what you end up getting is that like, it's a kind of a quacky, yeah. a quackier uh, sort of sound. Um, Often describes like an out of face sound, but it's not the right really description because no. it's not. It's a different thing. Being I mean, it's face. thin, but it's not. Yeah. it's not. Um, it's, it's just its own sound. There's not really any yeah. way to. to it's quite a famous it. sound for the for the strap, though, isn't it? Those yeah. in between sounds are quite sort of. So who would who would like be an artist that you would see using so, quite a lot? Uh, so I would say maybe John Mayer. Um, you know that well sort known. of yeah. that in between sound is, is, is a sound that he uses quite a bit. Um, when he was a Fender Strat player, mm-hmm. he's now a PRS uh, Blue Silver Sky. Is it sort of player? Still a still a Strat player. Still a Strat player. But yeah, behind closed doors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then maybe Martin Offler. Yeah, um, it's very very famous. Um, and also for me, like Hank Marvin. You know the Shadows. Uh, yeah. Like he sort of, you know, Buddy Holly. These are all guys that made the Strat super like, super famous. Mm. Really. But it's got this certain sound to it. It's definitely just got this kind of. You know, this glassy, uh, people describe yeah. it as glassy quite a lot. You know, it's that. It's, it's, the, op- it's the opposite end of the spectrum to um, like the Les Paul we were talking about. And as we said, that's got like a bassy, more woody sound. It's like this fat. is more of a, a bright. Yeah. Um, you know, let's have a listen to see what So this is, yeah, definitely more of the, the kind of. Kind of thing, um, or the really famous. If I can remember how to play, the really famous kind of. Uh, uh, yeah, John May. A little, yeah. little too much gain for that, but yeah, it's yeah. Uh, that's the noise. That's the kind of the outer phase pants. But people also really, really like neck pickups mm-hmm. um, on Stratocasters. Um, we should say as well, this stuff can get mixed up. Um, 
uh, so you can get Telecasters with strap neck pickup pickups in them. We'll go on to that in a minute. You can also get Telecasters with extra pickups in them. So um, yeah, um, but that is pretty much the Fender Stratcaster. Oh, tremolo systems as well. Yes. Some of them have whammy bars. Does yours have a bar in it? Or? It does. I haven't put it in. Yeah, but it has got one in there. Being a Jeff Beck, he's yeah. sort of quite famous for using the bar, and, and it's a sort of unique style how he plays with his fingers and stuff. Um, but yeah, this one is does have a bar in it, and it's a really good bar as well. I'd probably say this is not like, like a normal setup on the nut of here. No. This is like a LSR roller nut, we call it, which keeps the friction on the you know on, on the nut here. So it's really minimal. made for yeah. using that it's bar. It's made for using the bar, which is yeah. sort of the reason why I picked the, this this model. Of this track. Slightly different controls as well. You notice we've got two tone controls. Um, they yeah. get moved around a lot. Um, the older ones, the tone will be for the neck and middle position. As the guitars get to the later sort of period of time. Quite often they get done to be, um, I think it's neck and bridge. Quite often, it's quite a common mod. People move the tone controls to the bridge pickups because these bridge pickups they can get quite, quite steely, yeah. like really, really bright. Maybe you want that sound. Maybe yeah, that's yeah. what you're going for. Um, so yeah, let's have a little bit of a play. Yeah. Gun number three. The last one we've got is uh, the Telecaster. So the Telecaster is built quite a lot like the Strat in the same way as it had the bolt on neck. It's the same kind of thing. Just the neck plate bolts the, the uh, neck straight onto the body. Um, solid body as well. Uh, less pickups. So the Strat, as we saw, had three. Mm -hmm. um, Telecasters have two and only two volume controls as well and uh, just a three-way switch because we haven't got any uh, any need for five way but it's the same headstock a little bit smaller mm -hmm. um, this is uh, a Telecaster that I, I uh, built with a friend of mine um, and I've treated it very poorly over the years but um, you know and also part of that was I got it painted that way as well because yeah. relicking's uh, something else that you might want to consider normally again like the flame maple top though comes with a premium price point so it's not essential no. just one of those things relic it yourself go out play it Take chuck it, it yeah. about It'll, it will end up looking the same in no time. Yeah. So first of all, I want to say thanks to uh, Wayne Salter, who let us buy this guitar today. Yeah, thank you, Wayne. This is not my guitar. Um, this is a beautiful guitar. This is 1952 Telecaster. Okay. Um, it's an Anderton spec, so it's been built, um, I think it's Pete Honoré, I think it is, who's the chap who sort of, I think he owns this guitar, and I think they sort of built it with, um, you know, their, to their spec, what they, what they wanted. Yeah. Really. So this is a prime example where I was saying about the maple neck. Yep. So this kind of this neck uh, fingerboard being the same color as the actual neck. That's a that's a maple neck. And this has obviously been heavily relicked, um, as you can tell. Like it, this is meant to sort of give the impression of you know it's been gigged in road worn. Um, but they do an awesome job. We were looking at it this morning, like all the cracks and stuff in the paint and, and how they how they make it look like you know this looks like it's been on the road for fifty mm. years. Um, it is, it is pretty impressive. You probably can't see that, but it's a pretty impressive finish on the on the paint in that. That's hard to do. People train to do yeah, to make it look to make it look look right. Worn out, yeah. yeah. Which is um which is difficult. But it, this is a you know, this is a massive neck on this one. This is like a big baseball bat neck. Yeah, right? very different to this. It's, um, it's got kind of a flatter yeah. neck. Um fifties versus sixties necks as well. Yeah. That's a thing on most guitars. Often if the if something comes with a fifties spec neck, it'll be wider, Chunky, fatter. Yeah. 
Um, if something comes with a 60s spec neck, it will be a bit flatter. So just something to bear in mind. Yeah, and then um, maybe if we look at talk about the artists like we did in the other videos as well, talk about you know what artists come to mind when we yeah. do the Telecaster. Uh, so big ones, I would say, not necessarily artists, but artists who's musicians. So Luther Perkins with Johnny Cash. Okay. Um, James Burton with Elvis. Yeah. Um, talking the really old, older country guys. Um, right up to punk rock as well. Telecaster's a huge punk rock. So Joe Strummer from The Clash. Yeah. Loved a Telecaster. Um, I'm running out of ideas. Well, though. some of, some of the, the newer stuff, maybe the country guys as well. You've got Brad Paisley, mm -hmm. uh, Keith Urban. Yeah. Um, and then you've also got like Rolling Stones. Um, of course, yeah. Keith yeah. is the like the original the original There's, champion of the Telecaster. That's the thing. And then another guy that you may, may, people might not have heard of so much is John Five, who's like a metal guitarist. Yes. He used to play as yeah, a yeah. guitarist for Marilyn Manson. Um, maybe you wouldn't think a, a tele guitar would be the right suit for a metal band, but mm -hmm. you know, he's a he's a massive country nerd and, and that is you know, he uses the telecaster for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Robin Ford also has been known to use a, a telecaster for blues. Um, lots of people like them for blues as well. Mm -hmm. um, as I was saying about the Strat, you can do adjustments to these guitars, so you might end up seeing, um, sometimes you'll see Strats with middle pickups in there, so that gives you kind of some of the Strat sounds. Uh, this one, for example, this has actually had a, a pickup in it. This pickup's built to sound a little bit more like a Stratocaster neck pickup, okay. as is the one in yours, I think. Yeah. So, um, I mean, the other thing is, is you know, I've seen Telecaster with humbuckers in them as well. Yeah. I used to own a 1972 reissue, um, custom like Telecaster mm -hmm. and that had two two humbuckers. So that would be like a Les Paul sounding Telecaster, yeah. Yeah. you know. But, um, but, and they won't sound exactly like a Les Paul or exactly like a Strat, but it'll be close enough. If you've got a gig where you've got to cover loads of sounds, yeah. that'll be the one. Should we have a listen um, to them? Yeah. Uh, last thing I just want to say, Bodywood is also different on these two. Yeah. So we had a Swamp Ash Strat and an older Strat. This is an older body telly and a, an Ash body telly. So that might sound a little bit brighter than than this will. And also this is super light. Yeah, that doesn't weigh anything. This is like sort yeah. of a... You could do a whole gig on this yeah. and you, you wouldn't have back problems. No. Cool, um, let's do some let's, playing. Let's do some playing, yeah. Bye. 
Okay, so just rounding off this video then, we've done, we looked at the three big guns that we class as the three big guns. There's others you could probably add into the mix, and we spoke about this before, like the you know, 335, we were talking about that. Yeah, the SG, um, Gibson SG. But we thought if we start going down that hole, then we, it's not the three big guns anymore. Jazz Masters, Mustang, yeah. on the Fender side. It's a big there's, there's a lot of variation. Um, having a look, just, just go and, we would say probably start with those three, see which one yeah. suits you, and then if it's not quite floating your boat, have a look on the other areas of things, because the others are great guitars. Um, but yeah, my two cents. Those are the ones you are the ones you're going to see. I was going to say they're, they're the most owned guitar. I'd probably say in terms of, you know, if you're talking to any session player or anybody really, if they say what have you got in your collection, it's normally a Les Paul, a Strat, and a Tele, mm. and then some other, you know, have acoustic or something or some yeah, other variants yeah. of that or three three five as we spoke about. But funnily enough, I, I think with the session thing as well, rather than going down that rabbit hole of going of oh, session as own all three, yes, it's handy to have those two. But quite often when people get called for sessions. You'll get hired on sessions and things like that for people liking your sound, yeah. and the main of thing of your sound is going to be yeah. whatever guitar you choose to play. There's, so there's lots of guitarists I know that turn up, uh, and, you know, with one guitar, mm. and they make and it sound yeah. like all those other things. So that, that prime example, that Telecaster, yeah. I use that quite a lot. Um, if I want it to sound like a Les Paul, I'll turn the tone back and I'll put a gain pedal on. Yep. Um, Strats, I know people who you know they've come up with wiring situations. They do the same thing. They can get Telecaster sounds out of them. Um, they make Les Paul sound thinner. Yeah. So really, we're just saying, just find one of those, pick one, see which one suits you best, and there's a little roundup. So what have we them. achieved in this video today then? Um, we played some really nice guitars. <laughs> I've had a great day. So I've had a great day too, but I think, as I said, it's, it's preference, isn't it? It's down to you. Go and, go and try them in a music shop. Go and try them out, see what you like. You're, you're, you will gravitate towards one, I would say. Yeah. Or two, possibly. We use those artists, we said, as well as a jumping off point. Grab yeah. the stuff that you think your heroes like to play and, and see if it works for you um, and start there, yeah. but yeah. So don't forget, as normal, don't forget to subscribe to our channel at 15 Minute Guitar um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.